Hey guys, it's Adrian and today I'm taking a look at Blink's Outdoor Cam 4. So this is their fourth generation of this camera. It has 1080p recording, two-way talk, there's 143 degrees field of view, up to two years of battery life and infrared night vision. But let's put it to the test and see how well it does. All right, so if you're considering coming from the third generation of this camera, what is new on here? And there's two main changes. So the first is that you're getting 143 degrees field of view which is up from the 110 on the third generation. So you're getting about 33 degrees field of view wider, which is a pretty significant upgrade. There's also a person detection feature on here, which is different than the general motion detection. And what this is gonna do is gonna filter out movements where it can be due to you know, a car, you know, a tree moving, an animal, and it's only gonna send you an alert if it detects a person. But you do require a subscription plan for this feature. By the way, you do require the Sync Module 2 to get this camera up and running. So if you already own a Sync Module 2 because you know you have the Blink Video doorbell or some other type of camera, just buy the standalone version of this camera and skip the Blink Module 1, which is a little bit more expensive. In the package, we have the Outdoor Cam 4, two lithium batteries for it. We have a quick start guide, a mount, a right angle connector, and mounting screws. The design of the Cam 4 is pretty compact and small. You can see it fits into the palm of my hands and it doesn't weigh a lot, coming in at 0.2 pounds or about 112 grams. If we take a closer look at the top, we can see that we have that 1080p camera, you know, some sensors, a microphone, and then we have a speaker on the side here. Looking at the back, looks to be another speaker. We also have a screw to get access to the back panel so that we can put in those AA batteries. And then if we unpeel this weather sealing here, we have a USB type C port, and this can actually be used to top up the unit or keep it permanently powered, but you will lose the IP64 rating because you won't have this weather seal anymore. You have two options for mounting the Blink system. So the easiest is gonna to be to just secure two screws into the wall and then just take this bottom portion here and snap it into the back here. And you're just gonna press kind of hard till you hear that snap. And from here, you can see I could go ahead and angulate it up, straight, you know, down, whatever I like. The second option is to use this right angle bracket. So the way this works is you're going to position it so that this triangle is pointing down. You're going to snap it into the back like you did with the traditional mount. Then you're going to take the traditional mount and snap it in at the top. And it does take a little bit of effort to get it snapped into place nicely. Just like so and from here you can see you're again you're just going to install the two screws ceiling mounted and then you can go ahead and you know angle this straight or you know downwards kind of at an angle let's remove the back covering so you're going to use the same right angle tool here and just unscrew that all the way once you have access to the back there is a reset button here and this is where we would pop in those two batteries the blink outdoor 4 camera has 143 degrees field of view there's 1080p video with up to 30 frames per second, two-way audio. There's two lithium AA batteries. Comes in at 112 grams or 0.2 pounds. And the size is roughly 2.7 inches by 2.7 inches by 1.6 inches deep. The operating temperature is from negative 20 Celsius to 45 degrees Celsius. It has an IP65 weather resistant rating. I'm gonna go ahead and add the camera to the blink app. So I'm just gonna pop in the battery. All right, so I'm in the Blink app now. Notice that I have my sync module already set up on online. If you don't have a sync module already and you bought this camera with it, go ahead and set up the sync module first. But I'm gonna assume you have it set up now. We're gonna click plus, pick wireless camera, and then it says to scan the QR code printed on the device. So we're just gonna flip that over and scan it right now. And there we go. So just remember, do not lock the camera back up till you go through this process. I'm gonna go ahead, add it to my existing home network in the Blink app. And we're just going to, your system is armed, needs to be disarmed. So we're gonna click disarm. Okay, so the camera was added to the Blink app really quickly and it's saying, you know, welcome to the Blink Plus plan trial. And it does mention again that we do have person detection with the cloud plan, longer live view duration up to 90 minutes, and 60 days of video recording we can share and save photos and see, you know, photo snapshots. Let me go ahead and click done. Since we had to disarm the system to add the outdoor 4 camera, we can go ahead and arm it back now that we see that it's been added successfully. 
And what I'd like to do and what I always do is I go ahead and start a live view just to confirm that everything's working before I go ahead and permanently mount it. To install, just connect the mount using the two supplied screws and snap in the camera, or you can use the optional right angle bracket like I showed earlier. So when we first load the app up, we have an option to just take a updated screenshot. So if I go ahead and tap that, it's just gonna update whatever the camera sees there. So this is not dynamically updated, it has to be manually updated. But where you're probably gonna wanna go most of the time is into the live view icon right here. Let's let that load up. And I notice it does take a little bit of time on this system, even though I have you know great internet connection and speeds. But let's click on the full screen icon, and you can see that's gonna give us you know kind of a full screen view. I could go ahead and zoom in and take a look around. And again, this is a digital zoom, it's not optical, so you know it's not gonna be the best quality, you are gonna lose detail. But for the most part, the 1080p quality looks you know kind of decent on here. Now, you can hear that car going. So the microphone pickup is pretty good on here. I'm just going to cut the volume. And um, it does always ask if I want to continue. And I'm assuming that's because it's trying to save battery life. That does get quite annoying. You know, if you were wanted to monitor for, you know, periods at a time, it's very annoying that that keeps popping up. But here's an option that you can only have if you have the paid monthly plan. And that's the option to save live view. Normally, you will not have this icon appear here. If you just have the sync module too with the USB drive, you do need to have the monthly plan for that. Now, if I wanted to have two-way talk with someone, I would just tap that, say whatever I want to say, and then mute it again. So you can issue, you know, kind of warnings, alerts, or what have you. But let's go into more, and this is going to take us into the full settings. Now, when we're in the full settings, you can see this is where you could set the camera name, and it does show that the battery level is okay and it has status LED when recording. So people know that the camera is recording, but you can set that to off if you wanted to extend battery life further. Now pay attention to my Wi-Fi connection and sync module. They're both very excellent, but the camera is a bit slow to pull things up. And I notice a bit of freezing while I'll touch on later. Let's go into motion settings. Now you can see you're gonna wanna have motion detection on so that it alerts when there's any type of motion, but let's go to motion reporting types and again, the person detection is a paid option. It's only available on the monthly plan. I have the free trial, which is why I can use it. But generally you would be on all motion and you would receive alerts if there was you know, a car going by, a person, an animal, um, you know, leaves swaying on a tree, what have you. But for now, I'll leave it on person detection. And you can see we have motion sensitivity. So I noticed that when it's on six, it's very hit and miss for me. You know, if someone is walking on my lawn, it doesn't always pick them up. And I noticed I had to crank this all the way to the max of nine, and then it would alert more frequently. So obviously this is gonna, you know, kind of deplete battery life. So I would say the sensitivity has to be cranked all the way to the top, at least it does in my instance, because the camera's not very good at picking up motion, you know, if it's at six. If we go into motion zones, you can see any area that's gray, you know, you're not gonna have motion detected and as a result, you're not gonna receive any alerts. Now, if you wanted a bit more fine control, what you could do is click on advance and you can see you have a bit more control in how you set that up. Now, if we go into privacy zone, this is where you know you can go ahead and just you know block out an area of your neighbor's property if you live in an area where it's necessary to do so. Now, re-trigger time, this is another battery saving setting. So it's gonna take 10 seconds before you know um, the camera re-triggers or detects motion again. And you can go from 10 seconds all the way to a minute. Now let's go into video and photo settings. So this is where you can set clip length. By default, when I opened the app, it was at five seconds, which is far too short for me. So I believe I had it around, you know, maybe 20 seconds and you can go to a max of a minute. Now video quality, this is uh, where you can set it based on, you know, your internet speed. And it does show that, you know, best is gonna reduce battery life and standard is what they recommend, and then there's saver. You also have this option to end clips early if motion stops. So if the camera detects that there's no more movement, it can end the clip early. This is on by default as a battery saving option. Now you may want to disable it if you, you know, you want to catch someone kind of lingering, loitering around. Now night vision, I've set it to auto, um, and this just lets the camera decide when to switch to infrared, depending on the you know sunlight or ambient light around. Now IR intensity, you can go ahead and set it from low, medium, or high. I just have it on low, which is the default, and it seems to be working fine. And photo capture, so take a photo once per hour when enabled and armed. 
This is another feature that's only available with a paid plan and it's just gonna kind of generate, you know, a small video slideshow for you. Now, if you go into audio settings, this is where you can adjust the speaker volume. Now, video recording, you can turn this off if you need to temporarily disable it. And then audio streaming, you can turn that off as well. Now you can see we also have the option or the icon here with a person. If I go ahead and tap that, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna disable the camera completely. So versus, you know, completely uh, disarming everything, you could just disable the camera temporarily. I'm gonna enable that again. And you're gonna see outdoor four cameras enabled. Now there's this option here to snooze motion activations for the camera. So we can have from 30 minutes to four hours or you can do a custom one and the option is to set it um, all the way to say, you know, 24 hours. So I could set it to 2300. Now, when you're ready to review clips, you just click on this tab at the bottom here that says clips. And one really important thing to note guys is that if you're on the cloud plan, make sure you're on this cloud tab up here. Now, if you're on the local storage and you don't have a cloud plan, make sure you're tapping this icon which shows the sync module with a USB drive. The only reason why you're seeing this doorbell clip here is because, you know, my doorbell doesn't have that cloud plan um, at the time of this video when this was um, recorded. But generally, if you have a cloud plan, you're going to start in this tab. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tap on this clip here. And you can see that it does pull up pretty quickly when you have the cloud plan enabled and you can see the car going by there. Now we can also go into filter and we can filter based on events and to go ahead and save it, I would just click this down arrow here to download it or I can click the share icon and I have a couple of options down here to share. Let's take a look at the options now that I've canceled the free trial. So let's go into live view. We'll wait for that to pull up and I'm just gonna show you that we can no longer save live view clips like we could before. So I'm taking a look at live view. Say I see something interesting and I go to save. Oh, now I can't. I have to subscribe to a blink plan to save clips. So again, that's another limitation if you don't get the cloud plan. We'll go into motion settings and let's go into motion recording types and you can see that personal detection is now grayed out. We can't click on that. We're gonna be stuck with using all motion so you'll get alerts all the time regardless of if it's, you know, a person, a car, an animal, etc. Let's go into video and photo settings. So we can still adjust, you know, the clip length. We can adjust the um, clip type of resolution. But what we cannot do is use the photo capture feature where it takes a photo every hour. Another thing that changes when you no longer have the paid monthly plan is that if we go into clips now, you can see my last clip was here at 5.33 p.m on the cloud plan. Now, since I've canceled that, I have to now go into home, which has the sync module with the USB drive. And you can see after that time, like 547, 549, now I have to review clips right here. And of course, I'm not provided with any type of thumbnail preview to make my life any easier. So I'm gonna go ahead, play that, and you can see it takes noticeably longer to retrieve video clips now. And we're gonna wait and wait. And now I can finally see that clip. So again, this is something that's locked behind the cloud plan. It takes longer to review video clips and you're now longer presented with a thumbnail preview. The video quality at 1080p resolution is just average at best. You can definitely make out whatever is going on, but it's gonna be much harder to read fine details, especially at a distance. And this is something that they really do need to work on by increasing the resolution from 1080p. It is 2023, most camera systems are offering 2K quality at a minimum. And when it came to night vision, that was the same case, you know, you can use the system with or without some type of exterior lighting. Obviously, if you have some kind of exterior lighting, like a floodlight or a wall light or something like that, you know, it's definitely gonna improve video quality. But if you're just banking on, you know, kind of pitch dark, the image is definitely grainy. They do mention, you know, a little bit better low light capability. But, you know, it's still kind of not exactly where I'd like it to be. It's something that, you know, this system really does need some kind of exterior type of lighting um, to really get full benefit with night vision. The default motion sensitivity was at six. And guys, I walked back and forth on my lawn a couple of times. And I would say in more than half of the cases, it didn't even register any type of motion or that I was there. And that was even when I had the cloud plane and I had person detection. Now you can see I have to jump it all the way to nine and it does mention that it's gonna impact battery life. And it was only when I put it to nine that I noticed it was picking up motion a little bit more readily on my lawn and on the sidewalk. 
But one thing I also noticed that, that by the time it kicked in detected motion, a lot of people were halfway into the frame and were exiting the frame of the, you know, whatever the camera was seeing. So again, the motion sensitivity here is not the most sensitive and there's a chance that unless they're directly in the front of the camera, you know, you are gonna miss probably half of that footage from when they actually entered the frame. So motion sensitivity, it works, but it's not something that's, you know, gonna be really great in, you know, mission critical type of applications, in which case you're probably gonna want a camera with 24 seven recording. All right guys, so I'm now walking, I have the Blink outdoor cam for installed you can see it right there i'm walking kind of slow now i've not gotten any notifications yet now i've finally gotten a notification and i had to make it pretty much directly in front of it for it to detect me and this is with the motion sensitivity sent all the way to the maximum setting so even though i was in the field of view it didn't pick me up till i was directly in front of it this is what the audio sounds like coming now Blink claims up to two years of battery life on the camera and it's really going to be dependent on a bunch of factors. One is going to be you know where you live, how much activity you get all the time. It's also going to depend on how long you have the clip duration set in the app and you know the cool down or re-trigger time and also the temperature of where you live. Obviously in colder temperatures you know battery life tends to drain a little bit quicker. Now you can also connect a USB type C cable to this to kind of keep it permanently powered or permanently charged. But what you will lose is that IP65 rating, the weather resistant rating, because once you remove that covering or weather sealing from the charging port, you know, it's no longer gonna be safe against water, moisture, and things like that. All right, let's talk about the Blink monthly plan and if you actually need it to run this camera. So you have two options. One is to just get the sync module to and attach a USB drive to it. And the USB drive is gonna allow you to record clips locally. Now, unfortunately, there are a ton of features that are disabled on this camera unless you have the Blink monthly plan. Now, the plan starts as low as $3 US a month plus tax, and that's for their basic plan for one camera. You can also pay $10 US a month, and that is their Blink Plus plan, and you can have, you know, one or more cameras. I think you can actually have unlimited cameras. So it starts making sense if you have four cameras or more. So the person detection feature that I mentioned earlier that's new on the system is locked behind a Blink paid plan. So what that means is if you don't get the plan, anytime there's an alert from, you know, a car, a person, an animal, you know, leaves just swaying from a tree, you're gonna get an alert in the app. If you were to pull up live view on here, you could watch for 90 minutes continuously. However, on the free plan, you can only watch for five minutes continuously till it kicks you out and then you have to start another live view session. Now, I find this to be a bit ridiculous. I don't think this should be locked behind a monthly plan. There's a lot of other camera systems out there where you can just look at live view for as long as you desire. You do also have up to 60 days of video history with the monthly plan. And that's handy because you know you can go back two months if you needed to review something. And if you need a video clip that's gonna be delete it after 60 days well you could just download it to you know your local usb drive on the sync module and then just copy that to your phone or store it somewhere else so that is handy to have um, another thing with that is if someone was to manage to break into your house find your sync module find the usb drive and just yank the usb drive out then you would have no footage but you know i've just placed my sync module in usb drive kind of hidden away i still get great signal and it's not likely someone would find that unless they have a ton of time another benefit that you get is the ability to record live view on the camera so without the blink cloud plan if you just have the sync module to in a usb drive you wouldn't be able to record live view at all now a potential workaround for that that some people do is to start phone recording or screen recording on their phone they'll open up the blink app and then they can indirectly record live view the one downside or two downsides of that is one, it's easy to forget to start screen recording before you open up the Blink app and open up Live View. And the second thing is if you were looking at Live View on your phone vertically and you didn't put it kind of into landscape mode, you may not get you know the biggest or best quality file versus if you have you know Live View on the cloud plan, you could just download the specific video file with a, probably a better resolution. The cloud plan also allows the camera to take a photo every hour and then it just creates like a series of photos for you to review at the end of every day but the resolution is pretty garbage it's 640 by 360 pixels and blink says the reason for that is to save battery life but i mean if it has an hd camera on here why not just take an hd picture and get the maximum quality instead of you know really sacrificing image quality for battery life i mean the point of a security camera is to get high quality 
video and imagery. Blink also mentions that you'll have faster video access with a cloud plan. And that actually really annoys me because if they allowed the Sync Module 2 to accept USB drives with 3.0 or higher USB speeds, you know, we could easily retrieve that locally from the Sync Module versus having that type of functionality locked behind a paid plan. All right, guys, let me give you a scenario. You're having a pool party outside or you're having some fence work done or, you know, lawn care, and you want to snooze notifications on the camera for 24 hours so you're not bothered with motion that you know is occurring. Well, according to Blink on their site, you can snooze that for 24 hours, but you have to pay for a monthly plan. Now, why on earth would I have to pay to snooze notifications on their own app? You know, a workaround would be to go into the app settings on my Android phone and just temporarily not allow notifications till I'm ready again, or to go into the Blink app, disable the camera. I'm not gonna get any type of video clips and then just arm the camera back when I'm ready. But I don't think in any capacity that I should have to pay to have alerts snoozed on their own app. You know what I mean? They're not licensing a third party service where there's some kind of associated fee. This should be standard basic functionality on this camera. However, the thing that really annoys me is how they treat their customers because a lot of the functionality on this doesn't need to be locked behind a paid monthly plan. And I can say that confidently because I've reviewed other camera systems, they have zero monthly fees, they don't require any type of cloud processing and they have a lot of the functionality that this camera has. Now, if you were to get a Blink monthly plan, guess what? You're also gonna be subject to price increases in the future, whereas if you got a system with no monthly fees at all, you would never have to worry about that. Now, while the monthly fee may rub me the wrong way, for a lot of you, maybe it makes a lot of sense, $3 plus tax, it's not you know a hard pill to swallow. You have up to 60 days of video playback history, you get faster video access, deep person detection, that may all be worth it for you in terms of value. I just have an issue with the principle of paying for features that I don't think should be locked behind a monthly plan. Now, when you get this camera, you are gonna have the ability to have a 30 day pay trial, and then you can ascertain, you know, are the features that you're getting in the app worth it to continue that, or do you just wanna run it locally with the Sync Module 2 and a USB drive? Now, you guys know my thoughts on paying monthly for the Blink Cloud Plan. You know, $3 a month US plus tax is not a big amount, but it's the principle of having certain features that I consider to be very basic functionality being locked behind her that makes me really hesitate to recommend this system when there's so many other camera systems where you could pay zero fees and get way more functionality. So you're gonna have to decide if the monthly fee is worth it for you. Obviously, if you have four or more cameras, you know, paying the $10 US plus tax makes a lot of sense. And to truly get full functionality out of this camera, you do need to have the Blink monthly plan. So those are my thoughts on the Blink Outdoor Cam 4. Now, if you're interested in picking this up, let me know, are you gonna be running it with the cloud plan or are you gonna to try to go the local route with some of those workarounds that I mentioned? And as always, if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out a ton and stay tuned for more home security cameras, doorbells, and the like. And I'll see you in the next one soon.